We'll invite the children forward for our children's opening. And as they make their way forward, we'll recite our memory verse for this week. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ will all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. All right. <laughs> well, good morning, friends. Good morning, Vicar. Good morning, Vicar. Yep. I got a question. What season of the church are we in? Malachi? Easter. Easter, right. And we celebrate what with Easter? Malachi? The resurrection of who? Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Jesus rising from the dead. Now, in the gospel today, we're going to hear about another account that takes place during the Easter season. How many of you remember a man named Thomas? Okay, a couple. What happened with Thomas? Did Thomas believe that Jesus had risen from the dead right away? No. Nope. Do, you, do we remember what he said? What did Thomas have to see in order to believe? Did he have to see the nail marks in Jesus' hands? Did he have to put his hand into, into Jesus' side? Mm-hmm. Yep, he said, unless I see the nail marks in Jesus' hands, unless I put my hand into his side, I will never believe. But then, the next Sunday, Jesus goes and appears to the disciples again. And so, they're able to see that Jesus has risen from the dead, including who? Is Thomas able to see Jesus risen from the dead? Yes. So then he tells Thomas, come, put your hand into my hand. Put your hand into my side. Do you believe that you because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have never seen and yet believe. So have we seen Jesus' hands? Have we put our hands into Jesus' side? But we still believe what? That Jesus is real. And more than that, that he has risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. Yes. This is a blessed gift that Jesus gives to us because of our faith in him. We believe that Jesus, not only is he real, but he has risen from the dead. And because of that, he gives us not only the forgiveness of sins, but everlasting life in him. All right? Okay. So as the children make their way back, we'll sing our opening hymn. <laughs>
Before you stand for the service, I want to point out a little typo in the bulletin. Following the Kyrie, the bulletin says we are to sing the Gloria in Excelsis, being that this is the Easter season. Instead, we will sing This is the Feast on the next page, page 155. So uh, we will sing This is the Feast for the Hymn of Praise following the Kyrie. Please stand for the service, which begins on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your presence. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The entrant is printed in your bulletin. Like newborn infants, alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the word. Alleluia. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to God of Jacob. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. Forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, Alleluia. Long for the pure spiritual milk of the Word, Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for Quasimodo Genity is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were many, very many, on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John, chapter 5. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son, Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book, but these are written, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for the first four stanzas of our hymn of the day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
A few weeks ago, I preached on this passage for our Lenten midweek series, looking at the Office of the Keys. Now that we're in the Easter season, we understand the context of the Office of the Keys. Jesus gave his disciples the Holy Spirit after the resurrection. He gave the Holy Spirit to send them to the church so that they would be able to forgive the sins of penitent sinners and withhold that forgiveness from the impenitent. The key to this passage is that Jesus gives you peace by forgiving your sins. We might think that an empty tomb would have caused the disciples to go into Jerusalem and announce the Lord's resurrection to everyone. After all, John later wrote in his first epistle, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. Peter and John had been told that the Lord had risen from the dead. They even confirmed this by visiting the tomb themselves and saw that it was empty. Surely they would have gone and told the other disciples and gone into Jerusalem with this joyous news. Even with an empty tomb, even with the testimony of two of their own, where do we find the disciples? locked away in a room because they're scared. They feared that what the Jews had done to Jesus, they would also do to them. You might look at the disciples and think how cowardly they acted. But how many times have we kept our, marsh, our mouths shut because we got scared? We have been told that Jesus has risen from the dead. The Holy Spirit, baptism, and the Lord's Supper all agree to this. Yet we keep our mouths shut around our friends and our families because we get scared. We get scared that by telling our friends and family that Jesus has risen from the dead, that we'll be put on the outs with them and we'll look foolish. So, just like the disciples, we keep our mouths shut. Yet who came and stood among the disciples but their Lord and Master, and the first word that he speaks to them, peace to you. Peace because Jesus has forgiven your sins. Peace because he has risen from the dead. Peace because there is nothing left to fear. When the disciples see that it truly is Jesus by his pierced hands and side, they were overjoyed to see the Lord. Jesus speaks to his disciples peace after seeing them. Jesus gives you this peace by forgiving your sins. Jesus appears to you in his word and sacraments. He appears not to pronounce your condemnation, but to give you that peace that passes all understanding. The peace of knowing that your sins are forgiven. The peace of knowing that your death is not eternal. The peace of knowing everlasting life in paradise with Jesus. After appearing to the disciples, Jesus sent them out into the world. Easter was not to be locked away in a room. Jesus sent his disciples as he himself was sent. He sent them to his church to pronounce the forgiveness of sins. The absolution did not die with the disciples. Jesus is still calling faithful men and sending them to his church to forgive the sins of penitent sinners and to withhold that forgiveness from the impenitent. This is how Jesus gives you peace. He gives you a faithful pastor to exercise the office of the keys and grant you forgiveness by his word. It's just as when Ezekiel spoke to the dry bones. Without the word of God, the bones were completely dry, no life to be found in them. God sent his man Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. When Ezekiel prophesied, the bones came alive. And they showed themselves to be the house of Israel, God's own people. God spoke his peace to them, telling them that their graves will be opened and God will raise them from the dead. This same peace is spoken to you in the absolution. The pastor speaks to you as God's own people. Your sins make you as dead as the dry bones. God has sent his man, the pastor, to speak the absolution to you. Jesus pronounces the forgiveness of your sins and restores your life to you. 
you have the same hope that your grave will be opened and you will be raised just as Jesus was and just as the bones were. Jesus gives you peace by forgiving your sins. The declaration that Jesus has risen from the dead has been spread out throughout all the world by faithful Christians. This comes to you by God sending his man, the pastor, to pronounce the forgiveness of sins to you. You have the blessed gift that because Jesus speaks his peace to you, you have life in his name. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Sing the last four stanzas of our office hymn. The service continues with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. In our prayers, we pray for Janelle Dileski, recovering from a broken shoulder. We pray for Al Gross, who has Joyce Weeding's brother, who has been diagnosed with esophageal cancer. 
We pray for Jameson, Nebraska, healing a broken collarbone. We pray for Kevin Halsey, who is hospitalized. We pray for Brian Hagedon with health concerns as he prepares for surgery. We pray for Susan Bellis, Karen Ritter's sister, showing improvement following a serious car accident. We pray for strength for Josh and Stacia Friesler as both Josh and Stacia are deployed in the U.S. Army. And we pray for all those with continued health concerns, Kay Schmidt, Eva Tupker, and Kathy Strzok. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty and eternal God, worthy to be held in reverence by all people everywhere, we give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving us, for pres preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve your holy church throughout all the world in purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of fate to those who do not yet know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them the amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ and help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace on all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country and its inhabitants and all who are in authority, especially Joseph, our president, and Kimberly, our governess. Let your glory dwell in our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools so that our children may grow in the useful knowledge and Christian virtue and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire and water, from war and pestilence, from scarcity and famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and Father of the lonely and the forsaken, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the distress and those in sorrow. Accept, we implore you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and our minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings we bring before you as, your hum as our humble service. Grant your Holy Spirit to those who come to the Lord's table this day, that they may receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in sincere repentance and firm faith to their abundant blessing. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work that you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying he has destroyed death, and by his rising again he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, and with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
this very body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. The service continues with thank the Lord and sing his praise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for the closing hymn. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Um, as far as announcements go, the Hawkeyes women's basketball team is playing this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We'll see you later. No. <laughs> I'm teasing. Um, there are a, a number of announcements, of course. Circle lesson leaders will be meeting this Tuesday to go over the lessons uh, with the vicar to bring those uh, continuation of the study of the book of Philippians to their circles. So please, circle lessons uh, leaders, make sure that you're there. If you're not able to be there, please talk to another lady in your circle to make sure that she can be there in your stead. Um, I 
Vickers doing a wonderful job uh, with the study on Philippians, and I hear only good things and only good reports about that as well. You know, that's really about it. I do want to remind everybody that Church Game Day is happening again this month. It went well last month, so we're doing it again on April 14th from 3 to 5. Um, just bring yourself if that's what you want to do. If you want to bring a game to share, then bring a game to share. If you want to bring a snack, then do that. But if you just want to bring yourself, do that. Um, I also wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the conference that is being put on by the LCMS National Mission Office. Uh, they are giving the conference entitled the Created Male and Female in His Image Conference. Um, and you don't have to be there physically. There is a way to register for it for free and attend it online. Um, so please read the announcement for that in the bulletin. Church Council will be meeting on April 24th at 7 o'clock in preparation for the quarterly voters meeting, which is April 28th after our service, and there will be a potluck following that. So please make sure that you are there at least for the food. Um, we are having, I, I was assured by our district president this last Monday that we will be receiving a new vicar, not that this one isn't doing a good job, but we have to kick him out sometime. Um, so we will uh, greatly anticipate receiving the assignment for the vicar. If you are able to come, we are having a watch party on April 23rd at 6 o'clock. I still need to negotiate with the study guild over who gets the social room, um, but wait for that arm wrestling match a little later. Um, I think that's about it for announcements. Is there anybody else who has an announcement to share with the family of God? Well, good, Lena gave up on me, so God bless you all this week. <laughs>